Ladies and gentlemen, it is basketball time in Texas. It is playoff basketball time in Texas. And uh, it ought to be a great one tonight. Area championship, Michael Mosier, the Howe Lady Bulldogs, and the Grandview Lady Zebras. And here's the starting lineup. We'll let you listen to that. white uniforms, the home team tonight. But uh, Grandview looks a little bit Bulldog-ish themselves with the uh, dark gray uniforms, black numbers and letters outlined in white. We had a black and white night tonight with a little bit of a dark gray for Grandview. Yeah, we do. They are the zebras. And if you think if anybody was black and white, it'd be the zebras. Yeah, but, uh, they're actually black and gray. Black and gray, and we are just about ready to get underway. You heard the starting lineups for both teams. Possibly, if you did not, then for the Bull Lady Bulldogs, it's Madison Hargrove, Alyssa Smith, Riley Harvey, Peyton Streetman, and Darcy Foster. No surprises, really. Holly Hawkins has recovered from her uh, concussion-like symptoms, and she will play tonight. Riley Harvey about to tip off against uh, Jade Rochelle, and Harvey wins the toss. It goes to Alyssa Smith, left side. Double team now out right side to Streetman in the corner. Darcy Foster thought, thought about shooting the three and now up to Streetman top of the key. Over to Alyssa Smith. Down in the corner now to Hargrove. 
Back up top to Smith. Now Streetman down in the corner to Foster. Dribbles one time. Now tries to get it inside, throws it away. Rochelle has it. Now quickly up top for the Lady Zebras. And now setting up the offense is Kennedy Gents. And she's one of the great Gents sisters on this team. And now over to her sister, Crosby Gents, now in the corner. And this will be for the three-point attempt. Kennedy Gents, the senior, rebounded by Hargrove. No good. And quickly, Alyssa Smith for three. No good. Off the back side of the rim. Rebound quickly by Emily Sullivan. And Sullivan dribbles it towards the lane. Guarded by Streetman. Goes up for the runner, and it's good. And the first points of the night are for Grandview. And here quickly, Madison Hargrove down the floor in the corner. Darcy Foster, she nails it. Not quite a three. Way out there, though, and ties the game. 2-2, two two, 6.48 left to go in the first. We're just underway. Top of the key is Sullivan. Left side now over here to the senior gents. Kennedy Gents. She'll dribble down in the corner. Passes it off to her sister. Now to Sullivan, top left side of the key. Down in the corner, and that's Carrie Sullivan. So two Sullivans and two Gents for Grandview. And this is Carrie Sullivan over to the senior Gents. Almost stripped away by Hargrove. Shooting the three at Sullivan, and it goes in and out. Rebounded by Rochelle. And now Gents will drive the lane stop. And it's blocked by Alyssa Smith. She rebounds her own shot. And Smith now has it over to Hargrove. Deep pass in the middle, intercepted by Rochelle. She's going coast to coast. Goes up four and is fouled in the lane. Missed the runner, but I believe it's going to be Hargrove on the foul. Actually, he called number 10, Alyssa Smith. So it's going to be on Alyssa Smith. Again, we are just underway. 2-2 two to two the score, 5.53 left in the first quarter. Rochelle gets the inbounds. It goes off of her and it'll be Hal Ball. I thought for a moment it might have gone off of Riley Harvey, but it did not apparently. Foster will inbounds to Hargrove. Not much pressure. Sullivan on Hargrove. And now they are doing a, a medium press. Streetman will drive the lane, try to dribble it out, try to kick it out to Harvey. But the pass goes off a foot of Grandview, and Howe will get the ball underneath, and Madison Hargrove will inbound. Alyssa Smith wide left to the corner. Howe is moving right to left here in the gymnasium. And Foster will catch and shoot. It's going to be short off the front of the rim. Rebound, Streetman. She has it stripped away from her. Rochelle going up the court, chased by Smith. And now Rochelle will set up, passing it to Gents. Gents will shoot a deep three, and it's off the back of the rim. Rebounded by her sister, Gents, who takes it top of the key. Now looks to drive on Alyssa Smith. Draws the blocking foul on Smith. That's her second already. I thought for a moment it was going to be a charge. I did too. So Smith quickly with two fouls early on. 5.21 left to go in the first. And it will be Kennedy Gents, the senior guard, at the free throw line. And she rams in the first one, 3-2. to two. And a timeout has been called. We'll take one, two, back in a moment with Lady Bulldog action here at Kitty Winter McGee Arena. To, to the e when it comes to how Bill French Properties is 100% invested to the economic and residential growth for how They also provide commercial and farm and ranch services. Bill French Properties provides buyer representation free of charge and provides every service from mortgages to credit repair to skilled craftsmen and inspections. Visit BillFrenchProperties.com or give him a call at 903-893-BILL. Bill French Properties, realtors that you can trust. Servicing Grayson and North Collin County. Welcome. Welcome back. Three to two as Kennedy Gents will shoot the back end of her uh, two free throws here. Grandview in the lead. Now four to two as she swishes that one. Harvey underneath will pass out Streetman. A little bit of a trap and a little bit of pressure in backcourt. Streetman dribbles through it. Now has it stolen by Kennedy Gents, and she will do a left-handed layup here, and it's good. Six to two. Grandview out front early. Hargrove trying to break the press looking for somewhere to go with the ball. And now a long, deep heave down underneath. Harvey, a great pass. 
And I believe that was Streetman on the pass. And Foster. Foster on the pass, and now yeah. six to four. And now Sullivan shoots the three and air balls, air balls it just in front of the rim. 4.59 left to go in the first. And how trailing Grandview six to four. And now you're getting a little bit of pressure here from Grandview as Foster will throw it into Streetman. Streetman, Har Hargrove, and now she'll beat the press. Throws it down in the corner, stolen again by Rochelle. Quick pass up to Sullivan for a little easy layup. And Grandview takes an 8-4 lead with 4.35 left to go. The press is really, there's a kick ball by Sullivan. Jo uh, Jordan Streetman was trying to pass it over to Hargrove. A bounce pass, and Sullivan kicked it. Now we'll try it again. This time Foster will inbound. Hargrove has the ball, cuts the press up the middle to Harvey in the middle of the paint, drives to the bucket, and the ball goes out of bounds off of Kennedy Gents. And Howe will retain possession here. 4.24 on the clock, trailing Grandview early, 8-4. to four. Harvey with the quick inbounds pass, the shot missed from the top of the key, and now rebound Sullivan. She'll pass quickly down to the sophomore Gents, right wing, now over to her sister, Kennedy Gents, who will take it up top of the key. Guarded by Foster. Wants to drive to the right side. Now kicks it out deep in the right corner. Back out to the right wing. Feeds Rochelle underneath. Guarded by Harvey. Gets around Harvey. And misses the jumper. And rebounded by Harvey. And now Harvey will get called for a blocking foul underneath. No, that's not right. No, it Rochelle, Rochelle. Rochelle apparently got called for the foul. And Foster. Foster now is over to Streetman. Streetman in the corner. Being double teamed, the ball goes out of bounds. So we're hearing that we're having some audio difficulties. So here is Streetman. Trying to inbounds it. Lots of pressure from Grandview. Foster in the corner. Being guarded closely by Sullivan. Down underneath and now stolen. And here's the youngest Gents. She'll shoot a layup. Miss it. Rebound Harvey. Harvey trying to find Hargrove in the corner. She does. Trying to break the, break the press. Deep pass. Intercepted again. And this time it'll be Gents. Over to Kennedy Gents. Her older sister. She'll take it to the top of the key. Now deep in the corner, Rochelle. She wants to shoot the three, and she pops it. 11-4 to four early on here. 3.08 left to go in the first quarter. And Madison Hargrove trying to find somewhere to go, and Coach Derek Lance has called a timeout. We'll take one, too. Back in a moment with more Lady Bulldog action here at Kitty Winter McGee Arena at Texas Women's University. I'm attorney Micah Belden and I will always be a Bulldog. I'm a proud graduate of Howe High School. The great leadership from our teachers and coaches helped me be able to become one of the few certified criminal law specialists in Texas. While I love the black and white, in trials everything is not always that way. If you've been investigated, arrested, or charged with a crime in North Texas, you need to call me now at 903-744-4252 for a free consultation. I'm board certified by the Texas Board of Legal Specialization, Principal Office, Sherman, Texas. Welcome back as Darcy Foster will inbounds quickly to Riley Harvey, who has it go off her foot, but she recovers, grabs the ball deep in the corner. Quick pass out, Streetman underneath to Holly Hawkins. She rams it in. First action of the night for Hawkins, and all she does is quickly put two points in the hole there. And here's Jantz on a three-pointer. She misses, rebound Jordan Streetman. Quickly up the court along the right side, guarded by Jantz. And then there's going to be a carry. She's going to call, or the referee actually calls a carry on Streetman. They're out of the Fort Worth chapter, the officials are. Woody Matthews, David Barnshaw, and Joe Moore, the officials tonight. And here comes Kennedy Gents up the court. Yeah, and you're going to be in trouble because you called Peyton Jordan. Did I? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> Peyton Streetman, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Ball goes off the foot of Darcy Foster and out of bounds. They will say kick, and apparently 
Apparently, Howe's going to retain possession here. Yeah, I think it's uh, number Kerry Sullivan kicked it out. So Hargrove trying to get inbounds. All kinds of pressure now finds Harvey. Quickly back to Hargrove and now cutting and throws right it over Streetman's head. And out of bounds. And the Lady Bulldogs are having a rough start here. All this pressure by Grandview is really, really uh, stifling any possibility of the Lady Bulldogs trying to move forward in this game. Here's a pass deep in the corner to Sullivan, guarded by Holly Hawkins. Makes a move, goes around baseline, up, and she traveled. So Howe will take over, 2.04 left to go here in the first quarter, trailing Grandview 11-6. Foster underneath. Now finds Hargrove, quickly passes out to Streetman, Peyton Streetman. Peyton. She'll drive in the corner to Hawkins. Has the ball taken away from her, but then she recovers. Finds Harvey underneath, and the bucket is good. And the Lady Bulldogs cut the lead 8 to, I'm sorry, 11 to 8. And now quickly down the floor, and this is going to be a three-point errant attempt. Rebounded by Harvey, and now Streetman has it top of the key, being guarded by Kennedy Jantz. Quick pass, overshoots Riley Harvey, and it goes out of bounds. And again, all the pressure from Grandview is just causing havoc on the Lady Bulldogs. So here comes Kennedy Jantz up the middle of the court. And she'll feed left side Rochelle. And into the game now is Kaylee Knowles. And she'll hit Sullivan over on the left side. Sullivan guarded by Hargrove. Hits her sister, the other Sullivan, to the right side. Guarded by Holly Hawkins. Thought about a three. Now she's going to drive and kicks it out to Knowles. And she'll shoot the three off the front of the rim. Rebound Darcy Foster. Foster trying to set it up. Now it's being triple teamed. Kicks it out to Hargrove. Hargrove along the right side. Dribbles all the way down to the three-point line. Over to Hawkins. Inside to Harvey. A bad pass. Intercepted once again. And that's Kennedy Jantz. Guarded by Peyton Streetman. Jantz underneath for Knowles, puts it up, no good. Rebounded by Hawkins, and she throws it out to Harvey. Harvey quickly over to Streetman, down the court, right side, goes towards the bucket, and it's going to be a charging foul against Streetman. Twenty-seven point nine seconds left to go in the first period here. And Kennedy Jantz will bring the ball up the court. Grandview leading 11 to 8. And they're going to take their time and try to play for the last points of the quarter. 16 seconds on the clock. Over to Sullivan and back to Jantz. Jantz over to Knowles. Down, down in the corner. Sullivan shoots the three. And it's off the front of the rim. No good. Streetman rebounds. Right side. 6.5 seconds left. Triple teamed. Now cuts it up the middle of the lane. Goes toward the bucket. And that's going to be a foul on Rochelle. Not this time. You don't get the charge this time as Streetman drives the lane and draws the foul on Rochelle as time expires. Right now, Hal leads 11 to 8 with Peyton Streetman shooting free throws with time expired here in the first. She shot 75% in the regular season and she hits the first one there, 11 to 9. And after all of this, how bad Hal has really played here in this first quarter. Streetman's free throw puts them down by one. 11 to 10 as we head to the second quarter. Back in a moment with more Lady Bulldog action. Have you heard about the new coffee shop in downtown Van Alstine? Curie's Coffee Company in historic downtown Van Alstine next to the post office is the new upscale coffee shop serving Van Alstine, Howe, Anna, and surrounding areas. Curie's Coffee Company offers a wide variety of organic coffee and non-coffee beverages and baked goods. Come visit Curie's Coffee Company in downtown Van Alstine next to the post office and mention this ad and get 50% off your first beverage. Open Monday through Friday, 5 a.m. to 2 p.m. and 7 a.m. on Saturdays. Curie's Coffee Company is Texas quality. Welcome back. As Grandview leads Howe 11 to 10, as we get ready here for the second quarter, it's been a track meet so far. Um, with the Lady Bulldogs and Grandview. Grandview's put all kinds of pressure on Howe. 
and it's been hard to break the press. And now you understand why Grandview is so good because of that press. It's extremely difficult to get the ball even into your court, much less set up an offense and feed Harvey. Just almost impossible so far. So here we go with Darcy Foster coming out to guard Sullivan. It'll be Sullivan and Gents in the backcourt. Foster guarding along with Streetman and Alyssa Smith back in the game. And here's Gents dribbling on Foster. Kicks out to Sullivan, right wing, guarded by Smith. Left-handed towards the bucket. Kicks it out and over the head of her sister. It goes out of bounds, and Howe will take over. 7.48 left to go in the first, or second quarter, rather. And Howe trailing Grandview 11-10. Foster trying to find somewhere to go and tries to find Hargrove, but it's knocked away by Sullivan. And now Darcy Foster will inbounds again. 7.48 left to go in the second. Again, tremendous pressure by Grandview. Trying to mix and set picks. And now the ball stolen. Foster and now a kick ball by Sullivan. But a foul call. A foul was called before the kick. And I didn't see who that was on. I think they called it on Peyton. It'll be on Streetman. Again, that's her... Second. Second foul. So here's Sullivan in the corner, guarded by Smith. Drives to the bucket, tries to draw the foul, but she hits the layup instead. Extends the lead 13 to 10. Smith now trying to inbounds. Finds up top Harvey. Harvey finds treatment at the top of the key. Driving towards the bucket. Stops and tries to draw the foul. It's either it's blocked apparently, and now Streetman will regain her emotion and tie up the game or tie up the ball there. And possession goes to Howe. 13 to 10, Grandview in the lead. 7.24 left to go in the second quarter. Hargrove inbounds Foster. She shoots the three, nails it, ties the game. We've seen that quite often. Foster will shoot the long-range bomb, and she is a sharp shooter. Nails it there, ties the game. 7.12 left to go before the half. New player in the game is Hannah Hudson, right wing. She'll feed uh, Gents, who drives the lane, in and out, rebounded by Harvey, quickly out to Streetman. Streetman trying to dribble down the middle of the court, left-handed, and it's going to be off of herself. Though she'll say it's going to be a charging foul against Streetman, another one. Using her elbow, apparently. Streetman has a big smile on her face, talking to the official. Derek Lance does not have a smile on his face at all as he gives the official a little bit of word there as Already, Streetman has two offensive fouls in this game, three overall. And in a game like this where you've got to break the press, that is very dangerous. 6.52 left to go before the half. And now this will be a foul on Crosby Gents, the sophomore. Same type of situation. She was underneath the basket. And... Uh, uh, a deep, an offensive foul on her. Streetman will check out. Holly Hawkins checks in. Foster underneath the basket, trying to inbounds. Got to break the press here. Alyssa Smith finds an opening, and now she'll send it down court to Riley Harvey. She's going to stop, kick it out to Alyssa Smith for the deep three, and off the back of the rim, rebound Harvey. Harvey turns around, wants to shoot from the elbow, and it's off the back of the rim, rebounded by Sullivan. Sullivan now will go left to right, all the way down to the other end, 6.30 on the clock. Kicks it out to the senior gents. Top of the key, she'll shoot the three off the back of the rim, and that's going to be rebounded by her sister and kicked back out and saved out of bounds. And now gents has the ball again. Drives left side, kicks it out in the corner, and that's going to be Knowles for the three-pointer. Quickly now, Foster at midcourt, guarded by Knowles, finds Hawkins at the right wing. Hawkins nowhere to go. Now goes up top to Harvey. Deep in the corner to Foster, guarded by Knowles. And now Hargrove up top right wing, driving towards the bucket, around the baseline, kicks it out, and apparently it's going to go out of bounds, and it'll go the other way. So Sullivan will inbounds here at the 549 mark. Grandview leads 16 to 13. 548. And Gents will bring it up, left side. Stops 
at the three-point line. Now deep in the corner, high pass to Sullivan. She'll bring it down deep in the corner in the right side, guarded by Smith. Now feeding underneath is Jentz, and she'll make the layup. She's guarded by Foster. And the Grandview extends their lead 18 to 13, 526 on the clock. Foster underneath the goal, trying to inbounds. Smith will grab it, go up the right side. A quick pass over the head of Holly Hawkins goes out of bounds. So again, the pressure just causing havoc and causing the Lady Bulldogs to make some passes that they don't really want to make here. And 18 to 13, Grandview in the lead. Gents will bring it up the middle of the court. Uh, Carrie Sullivan checked out or checked in for her sister Emily. And here is Hudson. She'll travel. She had the ball, tried to make a move to the left, and did travel. Uh, put Landry Roten checking in for uh, Holly. Yeah, Holly Hawkins will check out. Landry Roten in. Here's Darcy Foster underneath the goal, trying to find Alyssa Smith. She does. And now it's blocked and out of bounds. Knowles uh, just tipped the ball, tipped the pass, and it goes out of bounds. Smith was trying to hit Harvey, I believe. And now Rochelle will check back in. She'll check in for Hudson. So basically your starters are, are in the game now. Except for Howe, who has Roten in for a streetman. And here's Foster being double teamed. And she kicks it off. Uh, actually... I guess that's Gents who kicked it. It went out of bounds. Foster will inbounds. Looking for Hargrove. Top of the key. Quick pass down in the corner for Foster. He tries to feed underneath, and it's blocked by Rochelle. And Rochelle will actually pick it back up and hand it to Gents, who will bring it quickly down the court, left side. Now over to her sister, who will shoot the three, and it goes in and out. Rebounded by Smith. Smith tries to find Harvey and does right behind her. Harvey dribbling up the middle of the court, trying to beat the press. Now finds Smith, right side, right wing. And now Harvey deep in the corner for Landry Roten. Now up top quickly for Alyssa Smith. Shoots the three off the right side of the rim, rebounded by Sullivan. 4.22 on the second quarter clock. Half trails by five, 18 to 13 as Sullivan comes up top of the key. Now over to the left. And this is going to be Gents on the deep three. Barely misses off the rim. And Sullivan is going to be called for a foul over Alyssa Smith. And that will be Kerry Sullivan, the sophomore. The sophomore Sullivan wears number four. And the senior Sullivan wears number five. And they both look almost identical. Here's Alyssa Smith driving to the lane. Kicks out to Roten, who does drive the lane. Makes a move and goes up with the left hand. And is going to be fouled by Knowles. And she's upset. She screams something. And now the crowd behind her screams something because she does. And Landry Roten will shoot free throws here with 3.59 left to go before the half, trailing 18 to 13. Roten swishes the first one, and now Howe cuts the lead to four. So, uh, Emily Sullivan checked back in for Carey. Roten. On the back end, rolls it in and out. And Howe remains four behind here with 3.57 left to go before the half. Gents top the key, Darcy Foster guarding. Now Rochelle left side, guarded by Harvey, drives to the lane, layup no good, rebound Harvey. Guarded by Rochelle, tries for the steal. Now Harvey's picked up her dribble. Now outside Alyssa Smith at the, three, at the corner. Now Foster shoots the three from the left side. In! And Foster again keeps Howe within breathing room, 18 to 17, narrows the gap, last three tied it. This one puts Howe down by one. Here's Gents driving through the lane, rebound Harvey. Now Harvey double team, throws it down the court. Alyssa Smith has it, kicks it over to Landry Roten quickly who goes up for the layup and it rolls just out. Rebounded by Sullivan, guarded by Hargrove. Contact and it's gonna be apparently a foul on Hargrove. Well, I tell you what, that is unfortunate because Hargrove was hustling down there, and it was Sullivan who bumped into her, and Hargrove actually gets the unfortunate foul there. And now here is the younger Gents driving to the bucket through between her legs and now up top to Knowles, 
And she is tries to throw it to Rochelle. It's stolen by Harvey. Harvey one-on-one -on -one with Rochelle now. Throws it deep down the court. And it's going to be taken by Landry Roden and tied up by Knowles. And Grandview has possession, so they'll take it on the far corner. Kennedy Jens checked out. Kerry Sullivan checked in. So here is Sullivan. Dribbling up top. Now over the right wing. Up top to Jentz, the sophomore, misses the three. Rebound Smith. Right side, throws it to Foster. A foul, should have been a foul call there. She throws it down for Hargrove. It's intercepted by Rochelle again. Rochelle picks it up, dribbles right to the free throw line, puts it up off the back of the rim, rebound by Smith. Smith deep down again, this time to Foster, quickly to Hargrove. The layup is good. And Hal has the lead for the first time tonight. 19 to 18 with 202 left to go here before the half. What a game this is. And here is Jens to the top of the key to Sullivan. Sullivan, right-handed dribbling, left wing, now over to her sister, Sullivan. The senior drives to the lane, now kicks it back out to Jens, top of the key, guarded by Hargrove. Right-handed dribbling, now left, now a bounce pass inside to Rochelle, stolen by Landry Roten, and it's going to be a timeout call, I believe, by Derek Lands while Roten had the ball, and we will take a – let's keep it right here, Michael. There we go. 137 left to go before the half. Very, uh, very aggressive basketball game. What, what is almost so impressive to me is that the Lady Bulldogs have just been completely worn out right. by this press. Completely worn out, but somehow have a one-point lead here before the half. And I'm going to tell you, it's the, the sharp shooting of Darcy Foster yes. with those very timely three-pointers that's really kept – how in this game? Yeah, she picks them up right there at the right time, and uh, that's, uh, you know, that's she is on fire tonight too. Well, you've got to get more opportunities for her to shoot those threes. Right. But the problem is, it's hard to set up an offense and rotate around because the press is just so tough. Oh, it is. And you've got to hope that at some point, um, Grandview wears themselves out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be nice. But, you know, it doesn't bode very well right now for Howe with Streetman in such foul trouble. But, on the other hand, the Lady Bulldogs have done well even without Streetman in the game. And here's Hargrove from Foster trying to break, break the press. Still going to the left goal. And here's Smith quickly back to Hargrove. Left-handed dribbling. Kicks it out and is stolen again by Rochelle. A bad pass by Hargrove. She had a clear lane to the bucket, a left-handed layup, but chose to kick it out to Riley Harvey. Called and, a foul uh, on Riley. And Harvey, in the process, not only has the ball stolen away from her, but picks up the foul. So, so a first foul on Harvey, which I, is, is good news if you're a Howe fan for sure. And that's the second team foul. Rochelle will go to the line. 125 left to go before the half. 19 to 18. Hal in the lead. No longer. It's a tie ball game. 19 as Rochelle knocks it in. Second free throw attempt is good. And Grandview regains the lead now. 20 to 19 with a buck 25 left to go before the half. Looks like Hudson checked in for Rochelle. And now Foster quickly will go underneath. She'll switch out with Roden, who will go back deep in the press. Foster looks for Smith, finds her. And back to Foster, back to Hargrove real quickly. Hargrove has it stolen away by Sullivan right near the out-of-bounds. Kicks it over quickly to her sister Sullivan, guarded by Foster. Now up top to Sullivan again. Now over to Gents. Kennedy Gents at the top of the key. Dribbles right side, guarded by Harvey. All alone underneath the basket is Hudson, and it's good. She was guarded by Roten. And now Hargrove waits for somebody to help out in the press. And here's Smith. Deep throw, and it goes in and out of Roten's hands and out of bounds. 
And again, Grandview will take over, leading 22 to 19 with 48 seconds left to go before the half. Just the press, the yeah. press has just stifled, stymied, whatever the word stymied, is. Stymied, stymied, stymied. And here is Kennedy Gents, kicks it out to Sullivan for three. It rims out and then back in. 25 to 19. Harvey trying to inbound. She finds Smith. Back to Harvey. To Hargrove. Left-handed dribbling. Now over to Roten at the three-point line. Back to Harvey. Harvey deep in the corner to Foster. She's going to shoot the three, and it is off the front of the rim. Rebounded by Hargrove. Looks like a tie ball coming up, and it is. And that should be Howe's possession with 14.5 seconds left to go before the half. Hargrove inbounds up top to Foster. Now over right wing to Smith. Deep in the corner to Hargrove. Nine seconds on the clock, and she loses it out of bounds, and Grandview will take over. It's just one of those nights so yeah, far that, so far. you know, the last two minutes, ever since Howe regained the lead 20 tonight, or took the lead, it's been nothing but Grandview. And here is Gent shooting a deep three-pointer off the back of the rim, and that will end the first half with the Lady Zebras of Grandview leading Howe 25-19 here at Kitty Winter McGee Arena at Texas Women's University. We'll be right back with more Lady Bulldog action and a halftime show. Two new businesses, Howe Mercantile and Texas Home Emporium, have joined downtown Howe at 107 and 109 East Haynes Street. These two antique and gift shops offer vintage items that are rarely available in the Howe area. Their prices will definitely please shoppers. Come enjoy a unique shopping experience at Howe Mercantile and Texas Home Emporium. Go dogs! Abby's Restaurant is family owned and run. They have the cure for all your home cooking cravings. Chicken fried steak, loaded baked potato, bacon patty milk, grilled chicken salad, cheese fries, jalapeno stuffed peppers, and more. Don't forget to save room for that cheesecake and cobbler with ice cream. We know you're going to love the food and the service. Abby's Restaurant in downtown Howe. Give them a call, 903-487-8860. Abby's Restaurant. In these days of fast-paced lives and fast-talking salespeople, it's nice to know you can still count on your local dish retailer, Cavender Home Theater, with folks right here in your area to tell you the honest truth. Dish simply calls Flip for the very same channel. For your home or business, Dish and Cavender has it. They're reasonable price with old-fashioned service. Call Cavender Home Theater at 903-892-3499 today and experience an expert who's happy to answer all your questions. Or go to CavenderTV.com. Do it now. Welcome back to Kitty Winter McGee Arena here at Texas Women's University. A nice arena here. It's yeah, that's a mouthful. Yeah, it is. <laughs> this is a really nice place. It is. I like it. I would like it better if the uh, Lady Bulldogs were leading 25 to 19 instead of trailing 25 to 19, but that is the case here. All we can hope for is a better second half and less pressure by Grandview. Right, and it, that the pressure is just killing them. Uh, that press is just wearing Howe down. You know, they got to figure out a way to beat it, and they will. I mean, you know, I'm sure Coach Hudson, um, Coach Hudson, <laughs> holy cow. Woo. I'm used to football. I'm sure Coach Lance is, uh, you know, he's going over that with them in the locker room. They'll get it figured out. Yeah, you know, he does, he's not one of the winningest coaches around here for nothing. He right. checked in with his 350th career win this season. So that's pretty, that's if, pretty awesome right if, any, if anybody, coaching-wise, can turn this thing around, the six-point deficit into a win, it is going to be Derek Lands. Yeah. And I see Tim Short over there on the far side, which means the, uh, the Howe Bulldogs uh, must have uh, wrapped up their game. It was also here in Denton. Yeah. They played Gunner for the tiebreaker. And we'll have to check and see. They were leading going into the fourth quarter. Let's see if I can get this uh, update right here. And the Howe boys did win. That's so the Bulldogs nice. will take the third seed in District 10-3-8. That's good. So who, where do we go next? Don't know yet. We'll have to check and see. I'm sure Tim Short may have that information for me. I'm going to send him a text real quick and see if he can send me that info. Yeah, that'd be, uh, we'll have to do some boys basketball, too. 
You know, basketball is entertaining. I don't have to say a whole lot. <laughs> you know, and I you was, get to mess the names up. I was just thinking, yeah, no, no doubt. I was just thinking about, you know, uh, how much of a horse race this is and how much different it is from it doing is, football. It is. I, I enjoy football. Speaking of Hudson, there he is. Well, I might get in trouble. <laughs> you know, we've done, uh, we've done football together. We've done basketball now together. And we did some softball together last year. So what we need to do is some, some baseball games this year. Right, yeah. I want to do some. We need to do some softball. That's, I think that's the only thing we haven't done is baseball. We've, right. we've done softball. And, uh, I, you know, it's just one of those things where we got, pe- got, pe- people are going to want us to, you know, start doing track meets and stuff. Right. We got, we got, uh, but we got uh, press box now. That is a fact. I know, I know both of them. Those are nice, too. They are. And, I, uh, hey, I went to the alumni game the other night. Yeah, I heard that. You wore, Did you wear your suit? I did. I had a suit on. And that will be the uh, how's that column this week. I was going to say, that would be pretty interesting. I'd like to see a picture of. Uh, I wish I had a picture of all of that because I really I thought I had it. I thought suit I, I thought it, I thought it was going out. Right. Suit and, and cleats. What it no, is. there was no cleats. It oh, was dress shoes. Dre- oh, and you almost hit it out. Yeah, my dress Man, shoes. There you go. I even tapped my cleat. My cleats. I tapped my dress shoes with my bat. Before you. Which has that. never been done. I don't think. There you, no, <laughs> that's a good one. So, who uh, was uh, who? Who was pitching? Tanner Hartsfield. Tanner Hartsfield. So, yeah, and I. So here's the deal. Tanner Hartsfield throws me a fastball on the outside part of the plate, called strike, first pitch, right? Right. And I'm sitting there thinking, okay, well, I can sit on another fastball. Right. I've seen his fastball. Now I know what it is. I know he's not going to throw me something different right here. I better jump on this pitch right here. It just so happens he threw one on the inner part of the plate right. just in my wheelhouse. And I lit into that thing. It was a moonshot, and I didn't know when it was going to come down, to be honest with you. I thought it was out, but it was one of those real high shots too. Right. And I'm already having I'm going around first base. Or almost to first base, already in my home run trot, which is about my full sprint these days. <laughs> yeah. And I'm thinking about Kurt Gibson. I'm going to be doing this fist pump around second base. I've already got it planned out in my mind. You're ready. In this fraction of a time, I've already figured out what I'm going to do. And about the time I get to first base, I'm just about to get there. Clank. <laughs> off the wall. <laughs> I thought, oh, no. Yeah, see, so then you had to pick up speed a little bit. In, a, in my suit. Right. And I was thinking, you know what? That goes from an old – that's the difference, five uh-huh. feet. That's the difference in, in just, you know, a long single right. and an old wives' tale. Right. Alumni, 41-year-old, hits a home run in a in suit. A suit. <laughs> you did, know? Did you have a tie on? No, I didn't no. have a tie on. And I, I didn't wear my jacket. I took my jacket off. Of the yeah, suit. but that so would have been so much better with a tie. Yeah, no. Yeah. I mean, my goodness. Well, you know, can't have it all. Right. At least I hit one off the wall. That's 41. right. 41. 41. I'm going to hit one out next year. Yeah, there you go. Lady Bulldogs coming back out on the court. Grandview on the court. We're going to take a quick timeout. We'll have more Lady Bulldog action here in just a moment from Kitty Winter McGee Arena at Texas Women's University in Denton, Texas. Whoo, that's a mouthful. The Howe Enterprise has served the hometown news since 1963. Since then, the Bulldogs have won eight districts, eight by districts, four area championships, and one regional title. We've covered 14 different head coaches during that time. The Howe Enterprise has been with the Bulldogs for 52 years. We were there when the pride of Howe won three band state championships. Look for each week's publication every Monday at HowEnterprise.com. When it comes to Howe, Bill French Properties is 100% invested to the economic and residential growth for Howe. They also provide commercial and farm and ranch services. Bill French Properties provides buyer representation free of charge and provides every service from mortgages to credit repair to skilled craftsmen and inspections. Visit BillFrenchProperties.com or give him a call at 903-893-BILL. Bill French Properties, realtors that you can trust. Service in Grayson and North Collin County. I'm attorney Micah Belden, and I will always be a Bulldog. I'm a proud graduate of Howe High School. The great leadership from our teachers and coaches helped me be able to become one of the few certified criminal law specialists in Texas. 
While I love the black and white, in trials, everything is not always that way. If you've been investigated, arrested, or charged with a crime in North Texas, you need to call me now at 903-744-4252 for a free consultation. I'm board certified by the Texas Board of Legal Specialization, Principal Office, Sherman, Texas. Have you heard about the new coffee shop in downtown Van Alstine? Curie's Coffee Company in historic downtown Van Alstine next to the post office is the new upscale coffee shop serving Van Alstine, Howe, Anna, and surrounding areas. Curie's Coffee Company offers a wide variety of organic coffee and non-coffee beverages and baked goods. Come visit Curie's Coffee Company in downtown Van Alstine next to the post office and mention this ad and get 50% off your first beverage. Open Monday through Friday, 5 a.m. to 2 p.m. and 7 a.m. on Saturdays. Curie's Coffee Company is Texas quality. Two new businesses, Howe Mercantile and Texas Home Emporium, have joined downtown Howe at 107 and 109 East Haining Street. These two antique and gift shops offer vintage items that are rarely available in the Howe area. Their prices will definitely please shoppers. Come enjoy a unique shopping experience at Howe Mercantile and Texas Home Emporium. Go dogs! Welcome back to Kitty Winter McGee Arena, Texas Women's University in Denton, Texas. Monty Walker along with Michael Mosier. And the Lady Bulldogs trailing Grandview 25-19 to here in the area championship round of the playoffs. Again, Howe and Grandview played earlier in the season at the Whataburger Tournament. And uh, Howe took the loss there in that game. Uh, you know, but they played with them. And Grandview's really good. It's not like... I mean, you're in the area championship now. Everybody's pretty good when yeah. you get to this point. And you're not going to find any uh, sleepers, uh, not very many in this round. And Grandview certainly is not one of those. As Sullivan will inbound here is now Howe will be moving from left to right towards that right goal from our vantage point. And Kennedy Gents will receive the inbounds here from Sullivan. Not much pressure by Howe. And we're just about ready to get underway here again. How trails 25-19 by six. Sullivan inbounds to Gents, top of the key, guarded by Foster. Headed towards the left bucket, and now top of the key to Sullivan, running the offense. Looks like they're running the flex, and now left side to Gents, drives the lane, stops, and pulls up and shoots it, miss it, and here comes Harvey with the rebound. Under pressure. She's double teamed and now throws it out to Darcy Foster, who's fouled by Sullivan. A nice job by Foster there to make herself pretty big where Sullivan had to go over the top of her. And that will be a foul on the oldest, youngest Sullivan, Carey, who wears the number four. Here is Hargrove, top of the key, guarded by Carey Sullivan. Right side, now left to Harvey, top of the three-point line. Bad pass is tipped away and now it's going to be the youngest Gents from one side to the other, found by Hargrove, misses the layup, and Gents will shoot free throws here. 7.21 left to go in the third quarter. 25-19, the Grandview Lady Zebras in the lead. Crosby Gents hits the free throw, 26-19. And now Hargrove quickly. And now to Roden. Now Smith, left side, stolen by Rochelle again. She has about five steals tonight. Driving all the way from one end to the other. Puts up the layup, and it's knocked out of bounds by Gents. Harvey was coming down with the rebound. I mean, uh, Foster, rather. And Gents just knocked it out of her hands. How will retain possession. Streetman checks into the game for Hargrove. 7.05 left to go in the third period. And how trailing 26 to 19 to Grandview. Smith now to Foster. Back to Smith on the press. Now inside to Streetman. Dribbling to the middle of the lane. Goes up for the layup. Off the back of the rim. No good. Rebound. Harvey tied up by Rochelle. And it'll be possession how. 6.52 on the clock. Streetman inbounds. Out to Smith, left wing, over to Foster, top of the key, back to Smith. Driving to the left, it's going to be a blocking foul on Sullivan. Smith did a great job, dribbling left-handed toward the bucket, and it was Sullivan who looked like she was trying to draw a charge, but she went backwards and it's called a blocking foul. 
So now Foster will inbound, trying to find somebody. Now in the corner, it's going to be off of Sullivan. Boy, she's good about throwing that leg out there. She is, and now Foster will inbound again. She'll move down just a little bit towards the corner on the far side, try to inbound to Streetman. Streetman drives to the middle of the lane. It's stolen by Gents. Gents dribbling toward the left side of the lane all the way down the other side and puts up the left-handed layup, 28 to 19. Foster quickly over to Alyssa Smith, left wing, now drives a little bit towards the corner. Finds Landry Roten, right wing, quickly to Riley Harvey underneath for the bucket. A great pass by Roten inside to Harvey. And that cuts the lead, 28-21, quickly now in the corner. Gent shoots the three, and that extends the lead to 10. Now quickly, how down the court. An errant pass by Alyssa Smith goes out of bounds, and Grandview will take possession underneath. 6.08 on the clock. I'm going to say this game is uh, picked up where it left off. It's still pretty aggressive. A 10-point lead now by Grandview, 31-21. 6.08 left to go in the third. Gents dribbling, right-handed, up the left side of the court, guarded by Foster. Top of the key, a little bit to the left, now toward the middle of the court, now right side, wants to dribble to the middle of the lane, kicks it out to her sister, and Gents will put up the layup, blocked by Harvey, but she rebounds it and kicks it outside to Sullivan. Right wing now up top to her sister Sullivan, guarded by Smith, inside to Rochelle, turns, tries to dribble around, makes a couple of moves, and slams home the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar skyhook. 5.33, and now Sullivan makes another steal. Driving to the right elbow, kicks it out right side to her sister, shoots the three off the rim, rebound Harvey, quickly out to Roten. Roten quickly to Smith for the easy layup. It's up and it's good. 33-23, Grandview in the lead, 5.17 on the third quarter clock. No pressure coming from Howe, and Grandview will dribble right up the middle of the court over to Gents. Right side now towards the middle top of the key, guarded by Foster. Backs up a little bit. 5.03 on the clock. Coming up to the left side. Top, very top left corner. Now dribble, starts to dribble down to the left wing. Now over towards the middle of the court. Right side, makes her way over to the right wing. Now kicks it out to Sullivan. Left wing, guarded by Smith. Now wants to drive to the bucket, kicks it out to right wing to her sister Sullivan. She drives the bucket. It's stolen or kicked away by Foster. Goes out of bounds off of Sullivan. And Howe will take possession. Holly Hawkins checks in. Landry Roten will check out. 4.39 on the clock. 33-23, a 10-point game. Grandview in the lead. Darcy Foster deep in the corner. Way down on the other end. She'll inbounds to Streetman. Guarded by Sullivan. Back to Foster. Back to Streetman. Streetman makes a move. It's blocked and now picks it up. It's stolen away. And a foul has been called on Sullivan. That is the okay. sophomore, Carrie Sullivan. Yeah, that's her third. And Foster will inbound. And Streetman has it up top, guarded by her sister, Sullivan. Right handed dribbling. Calls out the play over to Foster, right wing. Oh, wrong. Oh. This is going to be Gents who reaches in to steal the ball away from Foster, and apparently it went off of Foster out of bounds. And now Grandview has the ball. And I, I just I don't know about that call. Right. <laughs> apparently. Here's Gents on the right side. She'll kick it out now into Rochelle against Harvey. Good defense by Harvey. Blocks the shot. Alyssa Smith comes up with it. Double team and a foul by Gents. That's going to be Kennedy Gents on the foul. It's a hustling foul, but a foul nonetheless. And I believe that's her first foul. Yes, it is. So here is Alyssa Smith underneath. And she, still, she throws it to Streetman, who almost has it stolen. A bad pass by Streetman. And now it's stolen by Knowles underneath by Sullivan. Streetman blocks it, rebound by Foster, back to Streetman. Trapped in the corner, and another foul has been called. No foul there, apparently a lot of contact. Sullivan goes to the floor. Streetman has to heave it, no call. Deep in the corner for Sullivan on the three, and she nails it. Unbelievable. 3.34 on the clock, and a 13-point lead by Grandview. 
and a no call on Streetman. And now Alyssa Smith goes, apparently, she has a foul called on her. It's not going to be on her, though. So I'm not sure who they called it on. Called it on Kennedy Gents. And now their head coach, Steve Montgomery, is extremely upset about that foul call. And he's talking to the official. Derek Lands is not real happy with the non-call on Streetman down here as there was all kinds of all kinds of contact. Sullivan went to the floor. No call. Sullivan, or, or Streetman rather, was trapped back there. They were still counting down on the clock. Streetman had to heave the ball after the no call, which was intercepted. And now another call. Just, it's just not, it's, it's not real consistent. All right, it's not. So here's Foster, and she'll inbounds here with Streetman and Smith up top. Yeah, I'm going to watch this 23-23 battle here. Uh, Streetman and uh, Gents are going at it pretty good. 3.30 on the clock. Streetman up top, guarded by Sullivan. Rochelle has done a nice job on Harvey tonight. Rochelle's about the same size as Harvey. And deep inside, Harvey has it underneath, tries to go up, and it's going to be a foul on Knowles. So finally, penetration there, and Harvey is going to shoot. She'll shoot two as Hal trails by 13, 316 on the third quarter clock. 36 to 23. Harvey on the front end pops it 36-24. I'm gonna be tired after this one's over with. I'm gonna pass out. Harvey <laughs> on the back end, in and out. And now rebounded by Gents. She'll bring it up the right side. Montgomery says slow it down a little bit. Now she backs up towards the half court. Now we'll move over toward the middle of the key. Now to the left wing. Walking it all the way over from the right side to the left. Now wants to walk it all the way back to the middle. Guarded by Foster. Foster comes out a little bit. And now Jens makes a move to, for it. And now kicks it back out to Sullivan. Left wing. Guarded by Smith. Smith is beaten on the right side as Sullivan drove to the lane. And they're going to call Smith on the foul. And I believe that's her fourth. Is that her third? Yes, it's her third. So Sullivan hits the front end, 37 to 24. Hey, I can keep up with tick marks. <laughs> there you go. 243 left to go in the third. And this will be a miss and a rebound. Harvey out quickly to Streetman. Going to the middle of the court. Has it stolen away from her by Gents in the middle of the lane. Now Gents goes from one side to the other. Streetman tries to steal it back. Can't do it over to her sister, Gents. Now she's going to slow it down. Top of the key by Sullivan. Now over in the corner to Knowles. Thought about shooting a three back up top to Sullivan. Sullivan wants to drive the lane again on Smith, and she's going to do so. Now kicks it out to Gents. Top of the right side now over middle to her sister, Gents. She drives left-handed to the bucket. Kicks it over to Rochelle. A nice pass up and good. 39-24, Grandview in the lead with two minutes left to go in the third. So a big run here by Grandview. And here's a pass to Harvey underneath. Goes up in the middle of the lane. Layup no good, but a foul called on Sullivan. And that it will be on Emily Sullivan. That's her second. See, I, I don't have to do as much talking so I can do tick marks. <laughs> Keep up with everything. And Harvey hits the first one, 39 to 25. You know, at one point, Howe was up 19 to 18. And Harvey hits the second. 20, let's see, 39 to 26. So that's 20, a 21 to 7 run by Grandview here. And this is a pass underneath. It's going to be taken away by Holly Hawkins. And now a foul called on Hudson. It's going to be her first. Hawkins will now come to the other end and shoot two. Or one and one, rather. 140 on the clock. How trails by 13, but getting to the line now all of a sudden. All right, they are. 
They're going to have to get to the line a lot to get back in this basketball game. Hawkins toes the line. Right-handed shooter. Wastes no time. Throws it up quickly. No good. 39-26, a buck 38 on the clock. Gents will dribble up. Middle of the court guarded by Smith. And a timeout's been called. We will take one, too. Back in a moment with more Lady Bulldog action here in Denton, Texas. Abby's Restaurant is family-owned and run. They have the cure for all your home cooking cravings. Chicken fried steak, loaded baked potato, bacon patty milk, grilled chicken salad, cheese fries, jalapeno stuffed peppers, and more. Don't forget to save room for that cheesecake and cobbler with ice cream. We know you're going to love the food and the service. Abby's Restaurant in downtown Howe. Give them a call, 903-487-8860. Abby's Restaurant. Well, here we go. 133 left to go in the third period. 39-26. to 26. Grandview in the lead. It's been all kinds of pressure from Grandview. That's been the story of this game. The press. And now Smith is knocked down, which means Jentz is going to go all the way to the bucket. But she'll toss it out to Rochelle, who puts it up. 41-26. Now Grandview in the lead. Hargrove back in the game. Dribbling out to Hawkins. Tries to feed underneath to Harvey. Puts it up. That's good. 41-28. 1.15 on the clock. Rochelle has the ball. Not any pressure from Howe. As Rochelle will dribble it right up the middle. Right-handed. Now kicks it out to Knowles. Right wing. And now stolen by Harvey. They'll call a jump ball with 103. Possession remains with Grandview. I don't see that. Where is that? It's right oh, okay. there in front of the guy. It's, it's kind of very hard to tra- see when it's very clear. Tra- transparent. Yes, it is. So in it, inbounds will be Knowles quickly out to Jens. Left-handed dribbling, top of the key, guarded by Smith. Wants to shoot the three off the front of the rim, rebound Streetman. Double teamed and now breaks out of that, kicks it over to Hargrove. She's at the midcourt. Dribbling right-handed, looking for somewhere to go. Now dribbles left towards the top of the key over in the corner for Alyssa Smith. She shoots the three, and she pops it. 41-31, and it's a a 10-point game again. And here's Jentz quickly down the court. An easy, wide-open layup, but she misses it. Left-handed, Harvey with the rebound, and Jentz is going to be fouled, and she says something that her mama wouldn't like right Right. underneath the goal. Right. I'm glad that crowd box on your end. Mama would not be proud of that mouth. Right. With 30 seconds left to go before the fourth quarter, Howe trailing 41-31. to 31. And the other sister, Gents, turns around and looks at the official like he's nuts. And now Kennedy Gents will be taken out of the game. Riley Harvey will shoot free throws. 30 seconds left. And in and out. Rebound by Rochelle, out to Sullivan. Ten-point lead by Grandview. Now Howe starting to press a little bit. Rochelle down in the corner for Gents. She shoots the three, and the younger Gents pops it. 44-31 from the corner. Hargrove up the middle of the court. Throws it, and it's almost intercepted, and it is. Knowles has it, down to Gents, kicks it around, now picks it up. It's going to shoot from the left elbow off the front of the rim. Rebound by Rochelle, puts it right back up, and she's fouled. The shot, however, is no good, but it'll be a foul on Holly Hawkins. Be her first. Rochelle, who's very dangerous from the line, from the paint, from anywhere on the floor, will shoot and make the first free throw, 45 to 31. 1.3 1.3 seconds left to go before the fourth. And uh, she misses the second one. Harvey heaves it down to the other end with a desperation three, but it's no good. And we are going to the fourth quarter with Hal trailing by 14 to Grandview. We need two touchdowns, two extra points, and we'll be right back in it, Michael. That's right. That's right. Um, and this is- uh, is it considered Bulldog Quarter in basketball? Yes, it's Bulldog Quarter. Isn't it? Bulldog right. Quarter. You know, it's uh, if they can do this. You know, they just got to, you know, slow down a, a little. Uh, but it's been pretty aggressive. You know, the tragic thing, if this is a loss, 
is that this is the season that they've been looking for right. for many years. I mean, this is, you know, these girls were sophomore starters, uh, and there were very high hopes for this season. Right. And with a 14-point deficit, they're going to have to have and dig deep back about 25 years when they they said it was bulldog magic around here back right. in the 1990-91 season. And they're going to have to find some magic trailing 14 headed into the fourth quarter. Streetman will inbounds here to start the fourth. And she'll pass it over to Hargrove. Alyssa Smith into the game, Holly Hawkins and Riley Harvey. Both gents into the game, along with Hudson, Knowles, and Rochelle. Hargrove in trouble. Gents tries to steal it away, finally gets it away to Smith. In the corner for Streetman, shoots the three and nails it. You're going to get back into it. That's a good way to do it. That's a good way to start right there. 45-34, trailing Grandview, and now Gents right wing gets a pick by Rochelle on Smith. Smith fights through it, now left side. There are sister gents on the left wing, guarded by Streetman. Now they switch, Hargrove on her. And trying to feed inside to Rochelle, knocked away by Harvey. And now Streetman knocks the ball away, and it goes out of bounds. And Grandview will retain possession. Just got a text from Tim Short. The Bulldogs will play Tuesday night, 6.30 versus Henrietta at Valley View. Rochelle, in, or Rochelle gets the inbounds, turns around on Harvey, shoots it, blocked by Harvey, but they call a foul. It looked to me like all ball. What an amazing call that was. Just unbelievable. It looked like, and now he's having to go over there and explain it to Derek Lands because Lands wants to know what the situation was. Lands just shakes his head in disbelief. And now Rochelle hits the first of the free throws, and it's 46-34, Grandview in the lead, 7.21 left to go in the first. Yeah, I don't think he's very happy. Rochelle on the back end, of course, she nails the second one, 47-34. And now Hargrove deep in the corner, guarded by Sullivan, left-handed dribbling up the left side, now down quickly to Hawkins, quickly over to Smith, near the three-point line, puts up the jumper, and it's good. A two-pointer, and how cuts the lead, 47-36. Gents dribbling towards the line, making her way in the paint, stolen by, actually they're going to call a kick on Harvey. You and know, that was this close away from a steal. You know, I know why they don't wear headsets in the gym. Because if Coach Lands was anything like Coach Hudson, he'd be going through about four or five a year. Yeah. Here's Rochelle. She wants to shoot the three off the back of the rim, rebounded by Alyssa Smith. Picks up her dribble. And now throws it to Streetman in the middle of the court. Quickly over to Holly Hawkins, right side. Up to Harvey, and she misses the jumper. Now puts it back up after her own rebound and puts that back up. 38 now for Howe, 47 for Grandview. A nine-point lead. Sullivan thinks about shooting a three deep in the corner, brings it out left wing, right wing rather. Now backs up towards the middle of the court, over to Gents. She's on the right wing towards the middle of the court, shoots a three off the glass and good. Again, a 12-point lead for Grandview, and now the ball stolen away from Streetman. Gents will shoot another three and drain another one, 53-38. to 38. The ball rolls way back on the other end, on the east side of the gym. Had to be picked up by Hargrove, dribbled all the way back. And I'm not sure if there was a foul call. Yeah, there was. I'm trying to. I thought he said 20. I thought he said 25, but. Well, the foul was on Knowles. So, Madison Hargrove will shoot. How trails 53 to 38 with 6.09 left to go in the game. And Steve Montgomery wants clarification on the possession. And now the officials, again, they're out of the Fort Worth chapter. Woody Matthews, David Barnshaw, and Joe Moore. And now Madison Hargrove will toe the line. And she will miss the first shot. How trails by 15. Landry Roden checks in for Holly Hawkins. 
53-38, 6.09 on the clock. Left to go in the game, maybe possibly the season. Possibly high school careers. Hargrove misses the back end, the rebound by Gents. And she'll bring the ball up quickly down the court to Knowles underneath, goes up for it, and it's going to be blocked. And another foul call. I believe that's on Harvey. No, I think they got Landry Roden. Yep, it is on road. Yeah, I told you, I'm good on my You are good. You are good. I got got to help you out, right? How many is that on uh, Landry? Roden, one. See? Good. Oh, there you go. Look, Look at that. Hey, Jeep, no too. wonder. No wonder you're getting fell on the scoreboard. No, well, not all of them. We have one of those scoreboards hanging right over the dime, right over the uh, middle of the court. And here's the second free throw is made. 55-38. Alyssa Smith with the inbound. She falls down, picked up by Grandview. Knowles gets it over to Sullivan. Shooting a layup and is fouled by Rope. I actually think that was street. I don't think it was street. Le- Derek Lands is extremely upset. Apparently a technical foul has been called. As you know, Sullivan went up for the layup and was knocked down pretty hard. And it, you say it was... Is it a streetman? Is that what you said? I think that's what he's, he's calling it against the streetman. And now Lance is extremely hot. And he is giving the official the business over there, pointing, and just extremely upset. As Sullivan missed the front end and nails the back end, it's 56 to 38. And Lance is still on the court. And now he finally turns around, shakes his head, walks off, and he is hot. Now he throws his hands up in the air. But we're going back to action as Lands goes back in his normal crotch down position, standing right by the table. And now I believe a warning maybe it may have been given to Lands. Not sure about that. Yeah, I think that's what it was. So now Grandview will inbounds underneath. Rochelle in the corner, in the far corner. Now back up top to Knowles. Right wing over here to near, near side, left wing to Sullivan, guarded by Foster. Now over to Gents. She'll dribble it towards the middle of the lane. Guarded by Foster, goes up for the layup, and it's good. Right-handed layup. She is good with her left or right hand. It doesn't matter. Here's Alyssa Smith quickly down the court, deep in the corner. Wants to go up to the lane over Rochelle. Draws another charge. Rochelle draws the charge. Alyssa Smith looked like she had a blocking foul coming but just another apparently a great job by Rochelle of setting her feet that's all I'll say 530 left to go in the game 58 38 a 20 point lead for Grandview Gents top of the key guarded by Smith and now an offensive foul on Sullivan around nowhere she would try to I guess there was contact over there. Sullivan actually went to the ground, and they called an offensive foul on her. I actually called it on Landry Rope. Oh, my. They they pointed this away like it was going to go against Sullivan, and then Sullivan got up, put her palms to the sky, and now they changed the call, and it went on Rope. Her her second foul. And Coach Lambs is not happy again. So... Sullivan will shoot free throws here. And again, he is extremely upset. And he's so upset now he's smiling about it. Right. <laughs> Here's the front end. Miss there. Rote goes up for it. She can't bring the rebound down, down. Gents does. Now quickly over the corner to her sister, Gents. She shoots the three. It's no good. Rote with the rebound. She's trying to dribble out. Found by Rochelle. Or no, she's found by... Uh, Crosby Gents, the sophomore, younger sister, she shakes her head in disbelief. Gets a high five slap from her sister, Kennedy Gents, and now Landry will go to the free throw line, trailing by 20, 58 38, 5 11, left to go in the game. Landry Roten pops the first one. Gets a handshake from Darcy Foster. Dribbles three times, now four. Roten. Off the front of the rim, no good. Goes 
Almost out of bounds, but rebounded by Jentz, the, the older Jentz, left-handed dribbler. Thought about going through the middle of the lane. Now drives up right side, top of the key to her sister, right wing. Over to Sullivan, left wing. Guarded by Foster, now in the middle of the court. Now over to Knowles, back up top to Jentz, guarded by Smith. Fakes a couple of times, now drives to the bucket, left-handed, goes up. It's blocked by Harvey. Harvey has it. Quickly out to Foster, right side, dribbling quickly down, guarded by Rochelle, goes up for it, and the layup is good. 58 to 41, Grandview in the lead with 4.32 left to go in the game. Gents thought about dribbling in, but shoots the three off the back of the rim. Going to be rebounded by her sister, Gents, who will go to the corner, and she'll kick it inside to Rochelle, and a timeout has been called by Grandview. Probably a crucial, probably a good time out there for Howe because it looked like Harvey was about to foul. Right, yeah, that's a good, that's a good call right there. 418 on the clock left to go in the game. 58-41, a 17-point advantage for Grandview. You know why they're good. Uh, they've got athletes all over the court. Both right. Gents girls are really good. Rochelle underneath really is toe for toe with Harvey. And the, I mean, they're both the same, if you ask me. Rochelle and Harvey, they kind of cancel each other out. They do. They and, ha- and they have for sure tonight. And if you look at Gents, the older Gents, you know, Hal doesn't really have anybody else who can go toe-to-toe with her. You, know, you think maybe Alyssa Smith, but, you know, Gents is just a phenomenal athlete. And you add that with her sister, uh, Crosby Gents, they're just – Really, really talented basketball players, and so is Hal. Darcy Foster and Alyssa Smith and Hargrove, they're all just fantastic athletes, some of the best that Hal's had come through in a very long time. And here is Gents, Kennedy Gents driving to the lane, kicks it out to her sister for three, and it's off the front of the rim, no good. Rebounded by Sullivan, goes up, and it's off the front of the rim, no good. Rebound Rochelle. Kicks it out to Sullivan. She's going to shoot another three, and this time she sends it home. 61-41, to a three by Sullivan. Here comes Alyssa Smith up the court. Left wing, she's going to dribble in and shoot the jumper. No good, rebounded by Kennedy Gents. 3.46 to go in the game. Gents throws a bounce pass to Sullivan, kicks it back out. Very top near the midfield, (laughs) midcourt. Now over to her sister, Crosby Gents. Now over to Sullivan. Makes a step on Hargrove, drives to the bucket, shoots the layup, and it's good. 63-41, 3.22 on the clock. Streetman in, over to Foster, down in the corner for Alyssa Smith, inside to Harvey, turns around, shoots the left-handed jumper, no good, and it's rebounded by Sullivan. Over to Gents, quickly up the court, bounce pass over to her sister, now to the top of the key to Sullivan, right side, now towards the middle of the lane, Hargrove guarding, and now Foster guarding her sister. Over to Kennedy Gents, guarded by Smith. Taking their time, Rochelle, they're in the stall offense. Up top, Crosby Gents. Inside to Sullivan on the layup, left-handed, no good, rebounded by Harvey. Quickly up top to Alyssa Smith, driving down the right side. She wants to shoot the three from the right wing, no good. She gets her own rebound, however, and it's going to be tied up. Smith will really fight you for that basketball and she does right there and it will be Hal's possession. That'll actually be Grandview's possession underneath. Foster Streetman and Smith this side of the court applying the pressure. Grandview breaks it really quickly over to Gents top left side. Streetman guarding. Foster trying to trap. Smith grabs it and a foul on Crosby Gents. She puts her palms in the air and head coach Steve Montgomery waves his hand to say, it's okay, it's okay, don't worry about it. And now Smith will be shooting from the free throw line, 63 to 41, 222 on the clock left to go in the game. That's four for her. Well, they got three, I think it's four. Yeah, how good are you at that? Hey, I, I say four, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Smith will step up and shoot the one and one. She'll toe the line. And now there's some questions about the scoreboard. 
And apparently whatever the issue was is now corrected. And Smith hits the front end of a one and one. And we'll get to shoot a second one right here. 63-42. Off the front of the rim, no good. 2.22 on the clock. Gents dribbles up the right side of the court, guarded by Smith. Over to Sullivan. Top left side, guarded by Hargrove. Makes a step now, fakes like she's going to the bucket. Now over to Rochelle, top right side, guarded by Harvey. She makes a move on Harvey and draws the foul. Gets the elbow. And the 204. Is that an offensive foul? Apparently Rochelle called for the offensive foul there. Is that right? Uh, yes. So here comes Hargrove, down by 21, top of the key. She's going to shoot the three and nails it. About four feet behind the line, 63-45. And that's pretty good for a five-foot size girl herself. Quickly down the court, she almost makes the steal, but it goes out of bounds. And Sullivan will inbounds. Calling for motion is Montgomery. Gents has the ball, top of the key, guarded by Smith. Over to her sister, Crosby Gents, right wing, very, very tall. Now over to the left wing, Sullivan. Sullivan's going to drive, kicks it out, Crosby Sullivan. Cro Crosby Gents, rather, no good. Rebounded by her sister. And... Oh, uh, well, I think he called it on Harvey. Yeah, it is going to be a foul on Riley Harvey. Is that her third? Uh, yes. And now Kayla Anderson will check in for Darcy Foster. 124 in the game, and that very well might be the last time we see Darcy Foster in the Howe uniform as she checks out and will sit at the end of the bench down there. Streetman, Kayla Anderson, Hargrove, Harvey, and Smith into the game. And Gents hits the front end. 64-45, our score. And of course she hits the second and a 20 point lead for Grandview. Let's talk a little bit about, a timeout's been called. 124 left. Let's talk a little bit about the Lady Bulldogs. And down by 20 with a minute 24, it looks virtually hopeless at this point so we will we can talk about some seniors and we always hate this part of the season when it's coming to an end and you know it is but you want to be able to recap and give credit to these kids because boy they've been such great athletes for such a long time these girls actually won the district championship in eighth grade together right. they won together on varsity at a very young age made the playoffs or back to back to back to back by district champions I mean, there's a there's just so there's much, a lot to be said. For. There's so much talent that's graduating here and seeing their last minute on the court. Right. And I just hate this for girls like Alyssa Smith, Riley Harvey, who is now out of the game. And really, Alyssa is the only senior left on the court. Yeah. And Madison Hargrove will bring it up over to Roten down in the corner. Kayla Anderson drives to the bucket, guarded by Rochelle. Rochelle blocks it, and that sends it over to Gents, who will take her time, dribbling up the left side of the court, guarded by Smith. Up to the top by Sullivan. Rochelle, top of the key, guarded by Landry. Roten, and Roten is going to get the foul call as she reaches in, and Rochelle, not the person you want shooting free throws. She's going to shoot them. Of course, there's not very many on this team that you would be okay with shooting free throws. Right. They're all really good shooters. Uh, yeah, Rochelle, but both gen and but as I say that, she misses the front end. Peyton Griffin checks into the game for Alyssa Smith, and that's the last time we'll see Alyssa Smith in a Howe uniform. We've seen Harvey check out, Smith check out, Foster check out. And Hawkins check out. And here's Hargrove. 
deep in the corner, knocked out of bounds by Rochelle, trying to hit Peyton Griffin on a very long throw. And now Madison Hargrove will check out for Cameron Fullencheck, and Hunter Brockelman will check in for Peyton Streetman. So now an eye to the future for the last 51 seconds of the game. Brockelman guarded by Sullivan up top to Peyton Griffin. Wants to drive to the bucket, loses the ball, and Landry Roten regains the ball, hands it to Griffin, who puts it up, draws the foul on Rochelle. 39 seconds on the clock, 66 to 45, and Peyton Griffin is going to shoot. And, but first, I guess they're going to make her go retrieve the ball yeah. all the way on the west side of the <laughs> She auditorium. has to go get it herself. She has to go run after the ball and now come back to the line and shoot free throws. Maybe they should give her an extra th- uh, free throw. Something. And she'll shoot the first one and bank it off the back of the rim. No good. And now Sullivan, Rochelle, and Gents will all check out. They get a roaring ovation from the Grandview fans behind us. And Griffin rolls in. And finally, it went in and out and back in. 66-46. The younger Sullivan dribbling now on the right side, guarded by Peyton Griffin. Wants to make a move to the bucket. Fakes now brings it back out. 22 seconds on the clock. Over to Gents, the sophomore, guarded by Brockelman. Fakes a couple of times. Brings it back down. Now behind her back. Eight seconds on the clock. Six, five, four. Going to the bucket, Sullivan, as she backs off, that's the end of the game. How your Lady Bulldogs in the season tonight and in their great senior careers tonight, but they do end as back-to-back-to-back-to-back by district champions. Congratulations to the How Lady Bulldogs as they've had another 20-win season. And Derek Lands clinched his 350th win this season. What a great coach. How has, not only on the girls' side, but Tim Short also on the boys' side as they make the playoffs. And they will also play, uh, I'll have to check that again, and it looks like Tuesday night at 6.30 versus Henrietta at Valley View. So we will broadcast that game next Tuesday night unless unless something crazy comes up. We plan on broadcasting that game, Michael Mosier. So well, for every, we you know, let's let's kind of wrap this one up as the Lady Bulldogs lose by 20. You know, they don't have anything to be ashamed of. Those girls have played good for, you know, since they were in seventh grade. And, yeah. you know, eighth grade, they, they're just they're, it's a fabulous group of girls. You hate to see some of them leave. Some of them are going to play college ball. That's exciting in itself. Um, you know, you can't say anything negative about any of them. They're a fantastic group of girls. Boy, and they're great sportsmen, too. They are. Uh, that's, that's the great thing to see and how you, you never, you very rarely see bad sportsmanship right. from any athlete in how. And you know, you see the occasional, you know, push or shove or, you know, maybe a little jaw here and there, but, you know, you don't see very much. It's it's just part of the game. Well, we didn't see any language from <laughs> how players that no. we might have seen from the other side. But right. we'll wrap this one up. For everyone who's been a part of this uh, area championship game, how loses tonight, 66-46. We say goodbye to Riley Harvey. We say goodbye to Alyssa Smith. We say goodbye to Holly Hawkins. And we say goodbye to... Uh, Darcy Foster, Jalen Moss, Jalen Moss, and Katie Helpenstell. But coming back next year, Cameron Fullencheck, Madison Hargrove, Landry Roten, Hunter Brockelman, Peyton Griffin, the sophomore, Peyton Streetman, the sophomore, and Kayla Anderson will be back next year. And that's going to be a fine team to put together. In Derek Lands will have fun with that one. And you know Derek Lands will be successful with he whatever will. group he has on he the court. W- with that, whatever he has on the court. 
Well, Michael Mosier, I appreciate you being here. You bet. Appreciate you bet. everybody for listening. We're going to end this broadcast, and we will see you next Tuesday at 630 in Valley View. For everyone who's been a part of this one, I'm Monty Walker. So long, everybody.